<laughs> okay, so this segment, I want to ask you, um, I had one doctor describe emotions as the gears of a car. How many emotions, or is it emotions, right? Emotions, would you say there are? Because he said you can experience like happiness, fear, anger. And so some people aren't using all the gears. I can't remember if he said it was five or six, but in your opinion or expertise, what would you say? How many emotions um, are there? All right. There is one emotion, oh. which is fear. Mm. And fear is like white light. Put a prism in front of it and it breaks up into the rainbow. Okay, so all the emotions, and if you made a list, a copy of the uh, the template I gave you last time, all the emotions are there. There's not many. I think there's about seven or eight basic emotions. Um, and it is useful to be able to express all of them. Uh, for example, I used to have a difficulty with envy. I didn't know this. It took me quite a while before I, oh. and to give myself permission to experience envy. It's okay to be envious. Um, anger, I used to be really afraid of anger. Some girlfriends taught me how to experience anger. <laughs> <laughs> and then through, and, and then through martial arts, I learned to feel secure in myself that it's okay to be angry um, you know there's a difference between anger and rage most people experience rage um, rage is a bull in a china shop whereas anger is the definition of our boundaries mm. with anger I say you go past this you're toast this is my boundary I'm not taking any shit beyond this line. Yeah? With, with rage, there is no boundary. You're all over the place. People are scared of you without respecting you because you're a bull in a china shop. You know, they don't know what you could do. You could do anything because there's no one at home in control. With, with anger, someone is most definitely at home and in control. And you cross that person at your peril because real anger is the willingness to go to the end. There is no hold spot. Okay, that's real anger. You are willing to do whatever it takes to maintain your boundary. I'll give you examples. You see, the animal kingdom is much more civilized than we are. In the animal kingdom, they recognize Tanga so they don't have to kill each other. So if you've got a pack of dogs, a pack of lions, it doesn't matter what the animals are, you will, there comes a moment when they're vying for control and power of the herd. They want to be top dog, top animal, yeah? So you'll get a couple of them and they will go and they'll fight each other. And then for some mysterious reason, one of them gives up. Why has one of them given up? Because there's one that's given up is not willing to fight to the bitter end. The one who stopped dog is the one who has the determination to stay there to the bitter end, to do what needs to be doing, regardless of the cost. The other one senses this and steps back. So that's how they, they don't kill each other. It reminds me, I guess they say, if your bark is not as big as your bite, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like you were barking, but you don't have the bite to back it up, you know? That's a, that's a good sign. That's a yeah. good sign. So yeah. can, you, can you skip through 
Mm, I could say a situation where you have been hurt but you don't really acknowledge it and you move past it. Cause sometimes like we're in a, a situations where it's, it requires harmony or it requires, or you're in a state of joy and you might be hurt, extremely hurt, but maybe don't acknowledge it. And you kind of like skip over it. Cause you're just too busy focusing on what it is that you want to focus right. on. You don't have time to deal with that emotion. We are creatures that require relationships. We don't do too well by ourselves. Yeah, none of us do. We may not like being with others, but we cannot live without others. Uh, you know, even if it's only a chicken as a, as a friend, we need companionship. <laughs> Some people do have chickens as friends. <laughs> yeah. But we all need companionship. It's, it's built into our system, yeah? So in a relationship, what you've just described, I would say it's like a large container of water. When two people come together for the first time and they develop a relationship, they have this communal swimming pool, if you like, or call it what you will, but is this container of water and every time that there is a disagreement, an emotional conflict, a mental um, conflict of not seeing the world the same way, whatever it is, whenever there's emotional or mental disagreement, which is not addressed, which is not dealt with, and I'll say more on this in a second, it's like dropping a little drop of red dye in that water. Yeah? And so one little drop of red, red dye is nothing. It's neither here nor there. But if you have thousands of them, little by little, that water is no longer clear. It gets muddied and you can no longer see the other person, however much you try. And then people wonder why they dislike each other. Well, usually the one person on that side is like, Hey, what's going on? Because the other person just loses it. It seems like it's out of the blue. And and I say this because we, we discussed this before that by the summer, you don't step on somebody's foot one time and they just punch you in the eye. Usually they've built up a case and then they're, and then they're like, you know what? The next time she does anything, I'm going to punch her right in her eye. And you're like, wait a minute. Why did she just punch me in my eye? And it, it, it didn't just come out of nowhere. It's that person has ignored or or not acknowledged or come to you to say all the things that they feel. And they either stop talking to you or they yell at you or they have some type of outburst and you're like clueless. I think a lot of people sometimes don't want to deal with what you say, conflict, until it's too late. And then they overreact in a situation. Sure. It, it, and then there like, was another drop of red dye. Yeah, that was that was the, like they say the last straw. <laughs> you just didn't see yeah, all <laughs> that broke the camel's back, right? And yeah, the like, straw that was the camel's back. Yeah. Yeah, like so, why did you why didn't you take your shoes off at the door? Look at the mess you made, and it becomes a a, <laughs> a nuclear explosion, right? Mm -hmm. The lack of being able to have a a conversation to hold one's one's truth of that not resonating with what they said or that person has did to you instead of putting the backpack and then putting the backpack and then the backpack's full it's like oh, now well i gotta throw it all over the place and now i can restart it refill it again mm -hmm. so it's kind of like you get to that point you know you 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 it's full and it has to be released and you know i was there back in the day <laughs> yeah but uh yeah okay so you know this is um a very complex conversation we're having because human beings are very complex and there's so many there's so many plates spinning in a relationship to begin with we are attracted to people who reflect our suppressed psyche, the shadow self. See, 
if I am if I am very arrogant and you are very uh, mousy, you're going to be attracted to me because you wish you could be a little bit more full of yourself. And me being so arrogant, I'm attracted to you because, hey, there's no competition, right? I'm top dog here. <laughs> you just listen to me, you do what I say, and honky dory. So, so it begins great. You see this opposites attract. Now, gradually, the, the person who is very arrogant is going to be um, getting a little bit miffed with the other person because they, they don't have enough backbone to meet my arrogance. So it's good for a while, but after a while, as time moves on, it becomes irritating. On the other hand, the person who is very, you know, after a while, because you have to bear in mind that the person who is very arrogant or full of themselves, their deeper self is very weak. In fact, their deeper self is the other person. They're just hiding it with bluster. The weaker person has got a lot of arrogance in them, but they're suppressing it because the world says, you know, if you, if you display your arrogance, you're going to get whacked over the head or something. So I want to be a bit more like the arrogant self. But the more I experience the other person's arrogance, the more irritated I become with them. So conflict begins to develop. It doesn't take long for the, for the conflict. So after a few years, the relationship is gone because they're, in essence, they're really incompatible. However, they needed to come with each other to learn from. Hopefully, the person that is very weak and, and mousy will now be stronger and stand up for herself more. Could be him, okay, could be the, the other way around. There's no gender here. Um, and vice versa, the arrogant person might begin to really care for the other person and, you know, the fashade might begin to split up, you know, cracks in the wall and they begin to be aware that they actually need this other person, they're needy for them. So you just don't know which way it goes, but after a few years they move, they go on to the next person, they repeat the cycle perhaps not at the same level and they'll stay longer with the other person or shorter and then it will run its course and then they'll go to the next person and hopefully by the time they've been married three times they meet the right person for them and they're, they're moving on or they don't some people they are stuck at the very bottom of the rung and they stay together for life and they don't necessarily grow they they don't have enough whatever it is inside of them to, to think any further ahead. And, you know, they have miserable lives, but that's all they know. And there is security in that. So horses for courses. Um, so that, so there is that, there's that dynamic within relationships. As we grow, we find different people. And these different people reflect much closer what we're like inside and hopefully we find happiness and joy in our relationships um 75 percent of the time rather than the other way around you know rather than 75 percent of uh, uh nastiness you now have only 25 percent of uh, uh conflict but Ultimately, because none of us are perfect, we all have an ego. And that means that we are machine-like. So when we have a relationship with another person, what we're actually saying is, here are two machines who have been pre-programmed coming together and they are not seeing each other as human beings because their programming is getting in the way. 
their suppressed emotions are interfering with seeing the other person clearly. And so the process, what's important for our relationship is to work our way through that, through that, through that conflict, through that emotional intensity. What we do is we run away from it. And this is when the red dye drops go into the water, boom, boom, because we don't address the conflicts. So if you are the weaker person on the surface, you say, oh, well, you know, they're like this or they're like that. And I just, it doesn't matter. And it goes away. It does not go away. It simply gets shoved to the background. A more effective way of being with, with a partner is to go away from the partner and explore that emotion because the person the machine, we call it a person, but this machine has, be has behaved according to its programs, according to its childhood dynamics in a particular way. You press a button, they react. You don't like their reaction, but you're dealing with a machine. You're not dealing with a human being. So now I go away and I reflect on my emotions because my reaction, he or she is not responsible for that. We blame them for their behavior as though they have individual will, as though they have a willpower. They're a machine. How can you blame your car? Because the brakes fail. Yeah, the brakes fail. You walk yourself on the side road or whatever, and now you're blaming the car. You hit the car, you know, hit the bloody tire, you know. What's the car got to do with it? You know, if you really, if you love the car that much, you should have made sure the, the, the brakes were well, were well looked after to begin with. And this is what we do in our relationship. We acknowledge the other person has got a machine which we're interacting with. And if we don't like the program, then we need to do something about it. Now, if you want to change a program in your partner, getting angry with them ain't going to do it. What you do is you, you treat them, you, you compliment them when they do something you like. So you strengthen the behavior of what you like in them. And the more you compliment them on the good behavior, the more they'll do it. Yeah? You know, you do that with a dog, wouldn't you? We are dogs. You know, we're so much more than that, but don't fool yourself. We are machines. We have an ego, all of us. And we carry baggage from our childhood. We carry programming from our childhood. And it dictates how we perceive the world. You want to change your relationship? Treat them better. So the bits like, you like. You know, like, if they behave in a way you don't like, then do not strengthen that. Don't put any energy into that aspect of their behavior. Retreat. You'll deal with this in a minute but focus on strengthening the aspects of their behavior you enjoy. Be effusive. Oh, I love, I love it when you do that. Oh, you're wonderful. You know, whatever it takes. Just everybody likes to be complimented. We all have an ego, right? Everybody likes to be complimented. So strengthen that. Then you go, to your, you go by yourself, you connect with those emotions, because what your partner has done, they have triggered your weaknesses. They have triggered your emotional weaknesses inside you. And that is what's hurting. Not them. They've triggered your hurts from your past, from your own past life. 
So now, and it's not easy, but this is how we grow. You sit, you focus on that, and you experience the emotion, whatever it is, and recognize what's behind it. Recognize that it's you. That whenever we experience ourselves as being victims, it has nothing to do with our partners. It's all to do with us. And so we go inwards, we experience the emotion, we acknowledge it, we work on it. And then we focus on him or her. We see them for the machine that they are. We see that, we see that at that moment they're not in control. And we forgive them. It is the only way to let go of that poison chalice which came our way. It's no good saying, oh, you know, I just put it to one side. No, it'll always be there. You have to forgive them, not because you're a goody-goody, but because you recognize that they're a machine at acting automatically and that your emotions are your own, that we are responsible for what happens inside us. None of us are victims. We are not victims in this world. We think we are, but that's how we give up our power. Whenever we see ourselves as a victim, we are powerless. And then we justify our anger because we are justified in being a victim. And so we go around the merry-go-round. So if you want to grow in your relationship, you need to take your emotions to yourself, work on that, work on them. And then when you go to your partner, you know, be appreciative of their good qualities and build them up, <laughs> build up the good qualities. Yeah. Yeah. I think so much people expect others to, to suppress their feelings and their emotions and, and, and not allow them to just feel sometimes, you know? And uh, I don't know why we are getting to the point where we expect perfection from other people. And as people are going through what they call ascension and they're like growing and changing and they're looking at the other person resentful that maybe they're not grabbing certain concepts or changing the way that they feel they should change. When I like to say, you know, if you had a baby and the baby, you know, was taking extra time walking, do you kick the baby out? Like, I don't want this baby no more. <laughs> Forget this stupid baby. This let, me, let me take it a step back. When you say <laughs> they should, that is a mental program where you are, your mind is now criticizing the other person for not being who they're, you know, for not being who you want them to be. Expectation. The truth is, yeah. Yeah, we, we all have our path in life, whatever that path is. You know, if, if it's good for the two of us to, to share the same path, excellent. But sometimes we need to follow different paths. And we have to be allowed, we have to allow people to follow their own path. We need to allow people to be different. You know, my, my wife, um, she, um, I say, oh, look, I've just written this article. Would you like to listen to it? So, uh, yeah, uh, well, um, uh... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> She's not interested. She's a highly enlightened human being. She truly is. And she's dealt with most of her uh, emotional baggage. However, her, her way of being in the world she likes to be with animals. She likes to work with animals. And that's what she is. That's what she, that's what she likes. This thing, what I do, you know, that's for me, you know. And yeah, of course it would be lovely to have her be interested, but you know what, she's not, she'll never be. And this, this is how it is. We've been together 15 years, you know, it's never going to change. We're different. We like different things. 
that's okay. It's okay to be different. We don't all need to be the, do the same thing. Yeah, I think some of that too comes from looking outside at other couples and wanting to be like other couples, like you say, the, the programs of, we just want to model ourselves after stuff and not really just embracing life as it comes and just being okay with being different. Um, even when it comes to, like my sister said, did you watch this show? Did you watch that show? And I was like, I try not to watch too many other people's show, like too many other people's YouTube channels, because that even makes me feel awkward and weird sometimes because I'm like, oh, well, look at the way she did it. And I want to do things the way other people do it. Or I feel maybe, you know, insecure sometimes because I don't, I don't, I, I want to be cool too, you know, <laughs> but I have to be cool being me. So I can't go around watching what everyone else is doing because then I get to, you know, I get, I get off track. You know? I don't know what you're worried about. Have you seen my, my podcast? The, the I, I saw it. It was terrible. I'm just kidding. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, I, I, I see some people and they're so polished, you know? Yeah. Uh, Mine is like, God, it's like two guys having a chat in, 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 in a beer hole, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about it, you know. Yeah, Just yeah. be true to yourself. Yeah. This whole, especially 2020, I, I, I know we, we're, everybody was flourishing and, and just popping up with all these ideas and things. And I just spent the whole time trying to not look and trying to be in the space that I'm in and being myself. And same thing, right, Jonathan and Terry, you guys, because the cars around you are driving so fast, where are they going? Not necessarily in the right place either. So I had, had to take take my in for maintenance. <laughs> yeah, you said put my car in the shop. We were walking. Check engine too, right? <laughs> get, getting the details, getting the get a package put in on it and, yeah. you know. Just observing the traffic yeah but yeah it's it, go back like on the programs there's so many there's there's so many relationships and programs and that trigger other programs within in the person or the individual then it becomes that mirror effect if you're going coming into a relationship like you were saying about um you want to you see that couple and you want to be like them in your relationship and then there's that's, there's there's a lot of the that that is influenced and seeded within the Hollywood, the TV shows, and this uh, and that, uh, right? And, and isn't so, that why we're doing all these weird parties where everybody's dressed the same and they're popping balloons with colors? And I was like, when do we get so complicated with baby showers and and sweet sixteens with all this? Like things mm -hmm. that really ramped up and gotten extremely expensive in competition of looking like all these other people and keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. um, what is it? it? I lost my thought, but yeah. That, would hold, that holds the mind. It, it would hold their ego, right? It holds that concept of, of needing or needing to be like this so I don't become a victim and not having that. Because there's so much built up on them being presented in that way, you know. So for me, this path of spirituality is to do with being an ordinary human being in relationships. Mm -hmm. Because this is where, this is the manure from which the flowers will grow. <laughs> yeah. It's the messiness of relationships that gives us the opportunity to see ourselves, to experience ourselves, to explore our emotional world as it truly is. And so rather than chasing the light and the 12th strand of my DNA, you know, just focus on what are my emotions on a day-to-day -day basis and just working through them slowly but surely. So would you, would yeah, you call this treadmill the um, hero's journey, people? Because as soon as I get this, then I can have that. And as soon as I get this, then I get And if I get this crystal, and if I do, and, uh, you know, and if I look, you know, 
Ego, ego, ego. Yeah. So, Sal, how much longer do you have? I can give you another 20 minutes. 20 minutes. All right. We're going to pause.